Hey y'all, today we're gonna to talk about how to make perfect tumbler seams or how to hide them. So stick around. Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about seams, more specifically sublimation tumbler seams and how to get that perfect seam or, and what we're gonna focus a lot on here is how do you hide a potential imperfect seam. So we're gonna get right into it. Um, a couple of things that you need to do to make sure that you have a good tumbler seam, regardless of how you go about doing it. You wanna make sure that your image, your piece of paper is the right size. Cause if it's off, it could throw off that seam as well as the edges. Mine happens to be nine and a quarter by eight and one eighth, actually just shy of eight and one eighth. And then you wanna wrap it correctly. And the way I wrap it is I put the image on the tumbler, flip the tumbler upside down. That way I know the image is um, oriented correctly. Um, and then I want to pull that paper really tight against the tumbler. That's going to have a lot to do with how well the seam comes out. You really want to make sure you're using good tape. And the tape that I use, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, it's from Amazon and there are three sizes that I have used. This uh, first size um, is 10 millimeters by 33 uh, millimeters or 108 feet. So 10 millimeters uh, wide. And then the next one that I um, use more often is uh, the same 108 feet, but it is 13 uh, millimeters. It's a little bit wider. The one I use almost all of the time is this one. And it is... Um, 20 millimeters by 108, 106, something like that, 108 feet. But I'm gonna tell you, this is the tape. And the reason I like it is because it's wide and I can really make sure that seam is covered when I'm going up and down. Um, but what I typically will do is I will um, put one piece of tape down the middle and then I'll put a piece on the, the lower side of the seam, then the upper side, working my way out uh, and then I'll put a piece at the bottom and a piece at the top. Um, and then really importantly, I believe, is I'll use my thumbnail um, to push in on the two sides of the seam. Remember, there are two sides. Make sure you really um, use your nail or um, a, a little plastic, uh, a credit card or something like that would work fine. But you want to really uh, get those connected to each other. Make sure there's no air in between them. And then once I finish, the taping looks like this. And um, this is really tight and the seam is taped down uh, really tightly. On a side note, taping it this way um, has a big advantage when you are um, uh, removing the paper from the tumbler. Um, I like to peel mine hot. Uh, so um, what I'll do is pull the, the, um, the edges, the ends off. And then the cool thing about it is when I've got it set up like this, I can just peel right here um, on the center. And of course I'll have gloves on and I'll take my fingernail and just pull like that. And then what I can do is pull up right here and basically it will peel the top off. And then I can come over here and pull that bottom down. Now it'll stay a little bit flat because it, it's it's kind of stuck to the tumbler once it's um, the actual uh, sublimation paper, and then I'll just peel it off. But it's really really easy to remove the sublimation paper from the tumbler if you tape it that way. Okay, let's talk about some design specifics and how uh, uh, you can approach a seam. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Here is a, um, an acoustic guitar uh, that I uh, purchased on probably Etsy. I'm not, I, I know I purchased on Etsy a while back. This is particular design. I don't need to do anything for it. It just blends really well together. You cannot see that seam. And so this is a great example of needing to do nothing but tape it correctly using the right tape and, and making sure that that uh, paper is really tight before you sublimate it. Uh, here's another one uh, image that um, doesn't need any anything. It's just yellow. So this this seam, you can barely tell a little bit that the, this is a little bit darker on the seam, but I don't need to do anything. I could have, but in this particular case, I, uh, I didn't. And then a third example is this um, black uh, zoom lens uh, image. And this one, I actually kind of have to look at the bottom to see where uh, where the image is and I don't know if you can see 
Um, but this doesn't need anything. You know, you just need to make sure you're following the, um, the guidelines of making great, great seams. But there are a couple of um, examples where I like to add my own seam. And I'll give you um, one example is, here's a mistake, I did it backwards. But um, if you uh, will notice, while it's really close on this image, if they connected perfectly, it's not the same image on this side um, of the paper as this side. So oftentimes you'll come across that. There will be an image with beautiful flowers or something coming off to the right, but on the left there's nothing. Or if you're using a photograph and there's this tree is going off uh, to the edge of one side of the design and on the other side it's sky. And when you wrap those two together, you got the tree coming out and then just stopping. So that is a seam you're gonna notice. There's nothing you can do no matter how perfectly you do it uh, to hide that seam. But if you add something there, you can, uh, I think, make it a little, bit, um, a little bit cleaner. There are those that would say, why are you adding something to the seam? The, the goal is to make it look like there is no seam at all. And they would be correct. And many times I agree with that. But I do believe there are times that if you add um, uh, an element to your design um, on that seam, uh, that it really helps. And I'll give you one final example before we jump to the computer. Here's one that I made. This was early on, but you can see that is not a very um, good seam. And so what I did was I went back and I added this seam line and on the seam, the, 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 on the image, I made the image rusty looking as well. So certainly I made the seam visible from that line, but I like this design a whole lot better than this one. And certainly the final outcome is a whole lot better on this than this. So let's jump to the computer and see what we can come up with. But before we start talking about seams, I want to point out this master template that I use. It's this layer and it's listed as master DH gate. I created it when I did my first tumblers that I got from DH gate, hence the name. And it just so happens to be the same size as the Alibaba tumblers that I use now. Um, as a reminder, the clear inside area is the exact size that I need to print a design. So anything I put behind that master layer that is larger can easily be resized by using the magic wand tool to select that master layer, then select the layer I want sized, and then hit delete. It'll take all the extra out of the layer that I want sized. If that doesn't make a lot of sense, we're going to be doing it in a minute. So here's the first of four files that we're going to work on. Proud mother of a few dumbass kids. So what I want to do now is make the design fit within that master uh, template layer. <clears throat> and I'm really not worried about the left or the right because we're going to add a seam to both sides. This first image will do a seam on the left and the right. So when it's completed, and wraps around um, the sides touching will be the same. So we'll see how that works. So again, the goal here is to get the top and the bottom to just barely overlap the, um, the master template. Normally, I would be concerned about these sides as well, but because we're gonna add um, a bit of a seam there, I'm not worried. I know that my seam will be larger than that little space. So once I have it where I want it, I'm gonna um, put the opacity on the master layer back to 100%. Uh, so I'll know what it looks like. And then we're gonna use the color picker tool to pick uh, the color that we want the seam to be. You can pick any color. Obviously, you'd wanna pick a color that's in this design. And then we're gonna use the rectangle tool to um, uh, create our seam line. We'll simplify that. And then we'll go to styles and I'll select a random stroke and, and then go back to layers. And what I need to do is I want to get a darker color to use as the shadow. So I'm going to pick, uh, what was that DD5801. I remember, need to remember that number. Then I'll go over and double click the FX. And uh, I don't want the stroke, I want the drop shadow. And I'm going to use that same uh, DD5801. O one as the drop shadow. And then I can play around with those slide bars to get the uh, drop shadow that I want. Um, and then uh, the only other thing, I, I, I usually use drop shadow and bevel. Um, I'll rarely use anything else, so I'll get that bevel how I, how I want it. And then um, there's my edge. I need to put it below the uh, master template. 
and I'm going to put it just above the um, file that we're working on, the proud mother. And then what I do, and I think I can go to flatten layer and do the same thing, but I didn't realize that a while back, so I just do this now as I'll, I'll type an I, and then um, uh, put it underneath uh, the image that I want to flatten that's got an effect on it, and, and then um, once I put it under it, I'll merge them, and it takes the effect part away, and it just becomes a standard layer. But again, I'm pretty sure you can just hit flatten layer to do that. Why make it easy when you can make it hard? Anyway, I need to duplicate this uh, seam for the other side, but I want to make sure that it's the same width because remember, part of that is hidden behind that master uh, uh, sizing layer that we have. So I'm going to create a, a rectangular box that is the width of the seam, and then I'll move it over to the right side and line it up with the right side and then when I bring my duplicated seam over I'll know how much to stick it out from behind that uh, black master template. So let's uh, duplicate that uh, seam that we created and um, I also flipped it horizontal and see how it's much wider because I want to tuck it behind that uh, black uh, but I want to make sure it's sticking out the same amount so that's why I have that little um, orangish uh, rectangle there and then I can delete that. Now, as I look at it, I realize I think those are too thick. So I'm gonna undo uh, deleting that little rectangle uh, and we're gonna select both the rectangle and the right uh, seam and I'm gonna bring both of those a little bit to the right. And then once I've got it where I want it, I'm gonna select the uh, master layer. I'm gonna use the magic wand tool to highlight it and then I'll go to that little rectangle that I had and hit delete. And then it'll make that rectangle um, the right distance from the edge of the master template to the um, uh, edge of the seam. And then I can move it over to the left side and bring in my left seam to make those the same uh, width. And then I can delete that rectangle. And so here's what I've got. What I want to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to drop the opacity on my master uh, layer just to take a look and then I'll bring it back up to 100%. And then what I'm going to do is I always or almost always duplicate those three layers that I'm um, using and then I'll merge those duplicated layers into one layer. So it's kind of like a master. So that shape one copy three is all of the layers together and then I just hid the ones behind it. And then I can select the master a template, use the magic wand tool to copy it, and you'll see the little marching ants are, are all around that um, that black. And so, you know what I think I'll do? I'll um, hide that layer so you can see. And then when I hit delete, because I have the shape one copy three selected, it's gonna delete all of that space uh, where the black was, which will leave me with a perfect sized image for my tumbler. So there's our first finished design with the added seams. And so the second one that we will do is this image, Coffee Because Adulting is Hard. Boy, ain't that the truth. For this one, I'm only going to do one uh, seam on the left. So this time I want to make sure that my image is just um, larger than the master image and overlaps on the top, bottom, and right. On the left side, I'm not as concerned because I'm gonna add that, um, that rectangle, which will be our seam. But um, uh, for this one, I just wanna make sure that I'm over slightly, uh, really underlapping uh, the image underneath my master. Again, top, bottom, and right. So we'll use the color picker tool to select that brown. We'll make our um, seam that color and so I'll just use the rectangle tool to draw um, a rectangle and um, I need to make sure it's uh, below the master template uh, and just above our coffee layer and then I will as I did before I'll duplicate uh, those two layers and then merge the duplicated copies and then I'll hide the um, the original two and that way I've got something to work with so if I mess it up I still have my two originals so that's our file and uh, we want to go again to master 
hit the magic wand tool, select the master layer, go to our coffee layer that we merged and hit delete. And then we have our perfectly sized coffee design with the added seam. Okay, for the third um, image, we're gonna use this dog mom file. And um, we wanna do like um, we have done on the other two. We want to make sure that that um, design is fitting within the, um, that master black template. I should probably call it a window because it's like a window. Um, so I want to get that set up again. Uh, I'm going to put a design on the left and the right um, of this. But in this case, instead of using the rectangle tool and creating my own, I'm going to actually use um, the design. I'll use part of the design itself to create the edges. So I do encourage you whenever you're um, looking at, at doing this, find out what you might be able to use within the actual design. So I'm going to take this bottom green stripe and I'm going to copy that. And then once I copy it, uh, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees right. Actually, I'll paste it first, then rotate it 90 degrees right. And, um, and then I'll line it up close to where I am going to want it to be. And then once I do that, I've got that white stripe, that white piece um, that is overlapping the pink and some of the other areas. So what I can do um, in this particular case is um, use the magic wand tool to select that white. And then I can just delete that white. That looks pretty good. So I want to duplicate that uh, strip. And then I'm going to actually flip it horizontally because I want the um, that uneven side to be on the um, the inside of uh, of the design. But I also am going to um, uh, rotate it uh, 180 degrees. And the reason is if they're the exact same but flipped, when they match up, it's going to have that like kaleidoscope effect uh, and I don't want that. Um, so oftentimes I'll flip uh, the other side. Uh, I actually need to go in. Since I did the rotation 180 degrees, I need to uh, reflip it horizontally. Um, but anyway, that way it's, it's reversed from what it is on the other side. Uh, and then I'll just align it up. There was a little teeny bit of uh, white there that was hidden when I removed it before. So I'll need to remove that little piece. And, uh, and then it can be done. That can be the final, um, that can be the completed um, design. However, I do think I'm gonna go in and, um, and try to blend uh, the greens a little bit. And to do that, I wanna duplicate those three layers, merge them, hide the original three, and then I've got the one layer to work with I can use um, the clone stamp uh, tool with that one layer and um, blend um, blend the greens uh, together. So um, it doesn't really have to be because of this design. It doesn't have to be. Um, I don't think it has to be really perfect. Um, but uh, you don't have to do this certainly. Um, uh, and I probably could have taken a little bit more time to have done this a little bit uh, better. But um, Anyway, that is the design. So of course we use our master template. We get the, um, the magic wand tool and then select the layer we're working on, hit delete. It takes all of the outer parts out. And there we have our finished image exactly sized, ready to print and put on a tumbler. So the fourth and last one that I'm going to uh, work with today is this lemons. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use the existing um, image to create a um, uh, to create a seam. And, and this one's really easy because you have those uh, wood planks. I'm just going to use a, uh, a plank edge uh, uh, and put one of those um, pieces on the actual uh, edge of the tumbler. And I think I'll probably just do one side. I don't think there'll be need to do um, another one. So I want to make sure this is sized up right. Uh, in this case, I will, I think I will just do the left. So I need to make sure the top, bottom, and right parts of this image are just outside of that window. 
I'm going to focus on this last pane and I'll uh, grab the lasso tool and then I'm just going to go just down that black line uh, to the bottom so I can copy that full left pane. And as I'm looking at this, I probably will duplicate this, um, this left side and um, put it on the right. And we'll see what it looks like. Uh, anyway, I want to finish um, selecting all this and then I uh, am just going to uh, go in a little bit, go to the top and uh, connect those um, marching ants and then hit copy and then we're going to paste it and then I can slide that whole little piece of image off to the left. So that looks good. Maybe bring it in a little bit more because I, I am going to add that, um, that little bit of seam to the other side as well. So um, what I am going to need to do is go to layer and duplicate it. And then I will um, flip it and I need to rotate it 180 degrees. And what that'll do is flip it upside down and move it so that the seam is where I need it to be on the right side. And just like the other one I did, the reason I like doing that is because it doesn't give that um, any potential uh, kaleidoscope effect. I'm not sure what better way to describe it, but um, I don't want it to be the exact same as it comes out from that uh, center seam. So anyway, we are going to align this um, up where we think it will look good. And then I'm going to, of course, duplicate those three layers, merge them together, hide the first three, and then we'll go select the master dh gate uh, file, that master template, hit the magic wand tool, go down to our layer and click delete, and then we have our finished image sized for our tumbler. This, remember, this was perfect. This one is the white one, but look what happened because the coloring was different on each side of the design when I uh, sublimated it, um, it, you can definitely tell where the seam is because of the discoloration. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that as well. So let's go back into Photoshop and see if we can fix that a little bit. So here's the image and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a side, uh, in this case the left side, and I'm going to copy um, um, a bit of that left side, what, about a fifth, a sixth of the image. And, um, and then I'm going to paste it and, uh, and then rotate it uh, horizontally. And then we'll move it over to the right side and we will uh, connect it so that it is perfectly in line with the right side of the image. And then I will select the erase tool and then I'm going to use a brush that's got really soft edges and I'm going to make the size pretty large. And then what I can do is go down that, um, the, the edge of that um, piece that we created and just um, uh, erase it. And what will happen is it will blend in with the, um, uh, the main image. And I can do that as much or as little as I think I need. Uh, you can also make that uh, brush larger and, and smaller to give some um, variables. What I don't want to do though is run that eraser all the way up to the far right edge. And the reason is I want that far right edge and the far left edge to be the same. So um, I can erase as much as I want as long as I don't get all the way up to the, um, uh, to the far right. And then what I need to do is you can tell this line doesn't match up really well, so I need to use the uh, clone stamp tool to try to um, make that connect a little bit uh, better with the main image. And I'll merge those two together, uh, and then when I merge them together, it'll be a little bit easier to, um, to make that uh, line up a little bit better. And then once I think I've got that uh, about where um, I want it, where it looks good enough, um, 
I am um, finished with this image. And then we're going to um, print it out and we're going to put it on a uh, tumbler and see if it matches up just a little bit better. But that is the new um, finished image that hopefully will, um, will work a little bit better. Okay, so let's take a look. I will, um, if I haven't said it before, these designs, I, I purchased all of them on, uh, online, probably Etsy. Um, uh, and, but I'll often do that. When I purchase a design, I like it, but I don't always like the uh, seams. This is our proud uh, mother, um, which came out great. I don't know that I would add the seam to this particular design. I would probably adjust these flowers so they don't have the opportunity to blend into the uh, edge. Uh, but really, this one would have probably been fine without it. I just um, found this file and thought I could use it as an example. So our uh, proud mother. Uh, the coffee, because adulting is hard, ain't that the truth? Again, uh, here's how the seam came out. I think it looks great. And our dog mom. Um, uh, this one, I probably could work on the, um, the circles and align the circles better. Uh, but, you know, remember... Many tumblers are different sizes. I um, actually got one batch in a case and one was almost a quarter inch shorter than the rest of them. So, you know, you're gonna get a little bit of a variation, um, especially when you're getting down to that type of exact, exactness, exactness. Um, but anyway, that's how the, the um, dog mom came out. And then of course our lemons came out great. I actually showed this to my wife and she said, uh, she goes, I said, where's the seam? And she goes, well, there's the seam. No, the seam's actually right there. So that's a great example of using um, elements of a design to make that seam go away, to make it disappear. And here's our um, camera lens. Now, I will tell you, I apologize. I let these bleed a little bit. If I were doing this again, I, I'd, I'd uh, do this a little bit better, I, I hope. Um, probably by adding a piece of heat tape to the back side of uh, the piece of paper that's going down first. But you can see that the f um, fading of, of the color um, is, uh, is much better. I probably doing it again would also go and blend that dark a little bit further. Um, definitely right here, the rest of them look a little bit better. But those are some examples of how to either make close to a perfect seam or hide any potential imperfections. Uh, and there's some people that can take designs and, and tape them together real fast and have great seams and I applaud them for that. For me, sometimes I struggle with it a little bit. So oftentimes I'll add that, um, that little piece uh, to the design uh, to kind of help hide any seams. Equipment is really important when it comes to um, making a really great uh, sublimation tumbler. And I did want to point out again, the tape, I think I put it away, but the tape that I used, really important. Um, and, and I've kind of used it, um, well here. I've used it a lot. I've used this tape for some time and I swear by it. It actually won't leave any marks uh, on the tumbler if you have to apply it directly to the tumbler. Um, again, there's a link below in the description. This wide tape just rocks. And then have you something uh, to, to put it on a tape dispenser. I'll put a, a description of this one that I got on Amazon as well, but you know, any tape dispenser, you can get them at um, Target, Walmart, Office Depot, Staples, all that. And a really good sharp knife is important. Um, I'll leave you a link uh, uh, to one on Amazon. Uh, and make sure you change these, uh, make sure you change these blades out often. They're really easy to change out. Uh, but that sharp uh, razor really helps when cutting your, your image down. And then this is the lifesaver. I'll, le I'll leave a, a link to this as well. Uh, a metal 24 inch uh, ruler. Go to Amazon and purchase it through the link or go to Target or go someplace. I'm sure Joanne Michaels, they probably have them. Um, but this is just uh, amazing. So that about does it. I hope you have fantastic uh, seams as you move forward. Uh, don't forget, look at some of the other videos that we've made on uh, how to make perfect edges um, using uh, tumblers in a convection oven as well as the tumbler press, the tumbler press, which is what I use uh, pretty exclusively now. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
my puppy. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel for more videos. I got a lot of really exciting stuff coming up for, um, for this year. Again, thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. We're going to talk about and it's 20 minute and it's 20 minute and it's 20 and I'd probably add some tape uh, to the back side of uh, of the this I'd probably add uh, a piece of um, of again thanks so much for watching have a great day <laughs> <laughs>